DA, I'm looking to learn more about triggered sends. What are they and can you walk me through how to create one? Do you have any good examples of businesses utilizing the triggered send feature over another deployment application? Thanks! That's a great question. So here's what we're going to review today. First, what is a triggered send and what are some real world examples? Second, how would you go about setting one up in Marketing Cloud? And last, we'll review how to activate and manage your trigger campaign over time. So what is a triggered send? It's an email sent to an individual subscriber based on an action that subscriber took. So for example, after making a purchase online, I receive an email from that retailer with a summary of what I just purchased. The definition of what triggers that interaction from the retailer to Salesforce is called an API call. You can use triggers for lots of things, but the best benefit is that they can be personalized emails in real time. And here are some good examples of triggers we see every day. First is the website welcome. Often retailers will entice you to join their mailing list with the promise of a coupon, making it even more important to deliver this email as soon as a subscriber signs up so you're hitting them while still on your website. Next is the order confirmation. These are standard for all retailers, but providing vital information for a subscriber to be able to reference in the future. And last, a password reset email. Notifying customers as soon as a change has been made to their security information is important to maintain trust with the customer. And receiving it quickly is vital, especially if any actions need to be taken after receiving the email. And now, how do you build this out in Salesforce? Once in Marketing Cloud, there are a few steps you need to do before you can actually create your triggered send. The first is building out your email. Or if you already have an email previously built, make sure it's ready to go. Here, you'll see an example of us building an email out. The next step to take after saving your email template is to create a triggered send data extension. And while this isn't necessarily required, it's definitely nice to have for two reasons. First is to store dynamic attributes, but second, it's also helpful to assist in logging data historically. Once you've selected the trigger template, name the data extension and make sure it's marked as sendable. You can skip the data retention settings for now. On the Fields tab, subscriber key and email address will automatically be assigned based on the template, but add any new fields that may be passed in the API call. In this case, order amount and order date. Make sure to change the data type so it fits with the data being imported. And lastly, ensure your subscriber relationship is set correctly. For a lot of people, this will be email, but it could also be a unique contact ID or some other unique subscriber identifier. Now that the email build and DE have been created and saved, we can build out the triggered send definition. Under the interactions tab, create a new triggered send, name your triggered send, and copy that naming convention to the external key as well. This is what is used by the API to call the triggered send and deploy the right email. Next, confirm the send classification and change the sender profile or delivery profile as needed. Select the email build that you just created. And for subscriber management, we recommend adding to the all subscribers list and then selecting the DE created for this definition. If needed, you can always change the priority of the message. Hi, meaning if other large emails that are deploying at the same time, your email triggered send will take precedence. Hit save and now your triggered send has been created. Now that the trigger definition has been created, we need to activate it. Simply check the box next to the trigger and then hit start restart. You'll see the status now shows it's running and you can check the completed, queued, and error counts to monitor as volume comes in. If you need to update email creative for a trigger or just any other portions of a triggered send, you'll need to pause it. 
go into the triggered send definition and make any adjustments and then republish. You can republish within the properties section of the definition or along the toolbar within the triggered send folder. Once republished, you can then reactivate your triggered send by clicking the start restart button. Make sure the status changes back to running to confirm data can once again flow through. While a triggered send is paused, subscribers who come in during that time will sit in the queue and begin deploying once the trigger is restarted. So to recap, a customer initiates the trigger by some action. Data is received in Salesforce via the API call, and then if the triggered send is live and running, an email will be deployed. If paused, the data is still collected in Salesforce and queued until the trigger is reactivated. For today's takeaways, first, one of the biggest distinguishing factors from other types of deployments in Marketing Cloud is that triggers are real time. As soon as data hits the Marketing Cloud, an email is fired off. Second, while we went over the setup of the trigger definition in Marketing Cloud, know that an API call must be created at the source of the action for communication between the two systems. And last, keep in mind that emails are cached at the time of publishing, so always make sure to republish a trigger after any creative updates have been made. Thanks for joining. Give us a like and for more quick tips, subscribe to our channel below.